Shalom, everybody. Shabbat Shalom. Many of us have children that went back to school this week or are going on Monday. So I have children who went back this week and we had back to school night. And the third grade teacher sat us down and said, OK, school's getting serious. They're eight now. <laughs> And they explain that they have a new system of discipline, that they take behavior much more seriously now that the children are more mature. So their system is there's a blue card, and it comes home every week. And if your teacher writes something down on it, it's not good. <laughs> and that we should sign the card every week and return it. And one mother shared with me that her older daughter, when she went through the third grade, was really panicked. To, like, she was just so hard on herself that the first time she had to bring home the blue card with a teacher note on it, she, she really melted down. And I have grown past the point where I would melt down if something was written on a blue card. <laughs> but, but there are moments where I'm not proud of my behavior. And as we approach the high holidays and we contemplate the year that's passed, I think many of us might be able to find moments that we deeply regret. And that is why we read about the cities of refuge a few weeks before Rosh Hashanah, because there's a wisdom in the city of refuge about how we handle people who have made mistakes and what sh we should do with our regrets. The city of refuge is a metaphor, and it tells us to balance compassion and responsibility in how we respond to the mistakes we've made. So we read about the story of a person who had an ax blade that he or she did not secure to the handle of the ax. And the blade goes flying off and accidentally kills a person. Now, we'll call this person the manslayer. The manslayer is now fair game to the person who died's family. They have the right to come and take his blood. They have the right to kill the manslayer in revenge. But the manslayer has an option. He can run to one of the cities of refuge, and he's safe there. The family of the man who was killed can't harm him. It can be a little hard to relate to the flying ax blade today. So perhaps today's manslayer is the person who gets distracted for a couple of minutes while the gate to the neighbor's pool is open, right? Or the driver who looks down to adjust the music at just at the moment that a bicyclist is pulling onto the road. This is the paradigm of the ultimate mistake that we could make on accident, right? That we can, we can picture the trauma that you'd have to live with, the guilt that you'd have to live with for your entire life. And it wasn't because the manslayer was trying to intentionally hurt someone. It's a negligence that all of us could have been responsible for at some point in our life. So it's the worst of the worst cases, although I would posit most of the time when we cause a deep hurt to someone else, we're not doing it because we're malicious. We're not doing it on purpose. It's usually in a moment of, of anger or, or impatience or, or feeling like uh, we're vulnerable or, or even that we're defending one of our own wounds. We rarely try to hurt people on purpose. So the manslayer is just the paradigm of that ultimate case of when we hurt someone on accident. Now what about the city of refuge? The Torah wants us to transform our guilt. The Torah wants us to find a haven to deal with the mistakes we've made. It wants us not to run away from the mistake, but to run toward God. In fact, when the story of the city of refuge gets picked up in the Talmud, there are very specific instructions about the roads that lead to the cities of refuge. It says they have to be clearly marked. It says all obstacles must be cleared from the road. And it said those roads must be wider than usual because apparently a lot of us are going to need them. <laughs> but the point is that we're supposed to reach the city of refuge. It's a place where we are responsible for the sin, but it's also a place where we won't be overly harshly punished. It's a metaphor for how we should handle the month of Elul leading up to Rosh Hashanah. There are many moments in life where we feel we have to judge ourselves for the mistakes 
we've made, maybe starting as an eight-year-old, bringing the blue card home to mom and dad for the first time to be signed. But as adults, we still have moments where we have to be accountable for our behavior. And the point of the high holidays is not that we should be traumatized or paralyzed by contemplating everything that we regret from the previous year. The point is that we find refuge in the high holidays, a place where we know we're responsible for the hurt we caused, but it's also a safe place where we can be compassionate with ourselves and not overly harsh. Shabbat shalom. Wow.